guys, it's been a while. I've decided to get back into the groove of doing some videos, hopefully. I'm not sure how quickly I'll be able to pump them out because we are coming into springtime on a farm. I have baby goats coming, I have baby chicks coming, and all kinds of stuff coming up in the near future here. But in the meantime, I figured I would just go ahead and start by making videos of things that I'm already working on anyway. So as I'm trying to get back into the groove, there are a few things that I'm feeling kind of self-conscious about, like my fingernails. But the biggest thing is that the lens on my camera, the autofocus squeaks. So the video kind of sounds like I am on a ship. And so let's pretend that that's what's happening. I am fixing a necklace while I'm out at sea on a ship. Enjoy. So I made a necklace for my son not too long ago. And just a beaded necklace. Oh gosh, he broke it. <laughs> So I'm repairing it for him and I thought maybe you could watch me do that. So here's that little guy. This is a cafeteria tray. We use them for everything around here. The reason that I'm going to use it today is because when I drop these beads, they're going to roll everywhere. And I am clumsy now, uh, more so than I used to be. So I gotta work around it. So I'll be using this tray today. Okay. So about this little necklace, this necklace is made using check beads. And then these are little juniper berries that I gathered just at my friend's house. When you find a juniper berry that you wanna make into a bead, they have usually this little hole in the top. Oh my gosh. I promise I can do this. Okay, so they've got a little hole in the top and that is from ants eating out the inside of the berry. And so if you wanna make it into a bead, you just drill a hole in the back end. So that's what I've done here. See, I'm dropping stuff already. So I have a jar of these that I collected at my friend's property and that I've been working on turning them into beads. So I'm gonna use these. I have little beads here that I'll be using. And these I got all from Crazy Crow Trading Company. I'll leave a link for those in the description. Okay, let's get started here and roll up my sleeves. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just take this right off the string here. I'm gonna try to leave it in order that it already is so that as I go, I don't have to do as much. Um, sorting it'll just all be in the same spot where it belongs. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm just gonna pull the string out and try to keep it in a straight line. There we go. Close enough. And I'm gonna do the same over here. Okay and now I'm gonna make some little piles of beads. Okay so I've got these all laid out in little piles of the colors that I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna grab some spider wire and I'm shooting for about 22 inches so that it's big enough to go over my son's head. All right, I've got about 24 inches of fire or spider wire here. Oh my gosh, my birds are crazy. I'm gonna close these doors. All right. So, so size 10 needle. These just have a little bit bigger hole. This um, spider wire is kind of thick. Okay, it doesn't want to go through the hole, so I am going to do something gross, and I'm going to chew on the end of this with my front teeth to flatten it out. The spider wire has a little bit of a waxy coating on it, so if I just kind of bite the end, it flattens it enough to go through this hole here. Now we're in and I'm going to use a stop bead on the end and I do that by pulling one bead almost to the end of the wire, or sorry, the thread. Oh my goodness. So since I went, whoop, 
in this direction. I'm going to go in that direction again. And it's going to make a loop around the outside of that bead. And that bead is not going to fall off now. Okay, so I'm going to start with one of one of my juniper beads because it'll be easier to hide the knot inside of there when I finish. So when I end, I'll be ending with this dark red color. So the pattern goes dark red, medium red, light red, darker orange, light orange, yellow, white, and then we repeat that in reverse. So I have several beads on my needle here. I'm just going to pull them on and let them fall down to my juniper bead. Okay, so we repeat that pattern in reverse. So white, yellow, light orange, dark orange, light red, medium red, dark red, and then a juniper berry. So I'm going to do my best to make sure that all of the juniper berries are facing the same direction on the necklace. So I'm going to show you that on one end of the berry, it is light, and on the other end, it's dark. And the light side has a bigger hole than the dark side. But every time I put one of these on my string of beads here, I'm going to go through the larger hole on the light side so that they'll all be facing the same direction in the end. Okie dokie. All right, so I'm just going to keep doing this and I'll probably speed through and give you some fast footage so you don't have to watch me for 20 minutes doing the same thing. started with a juniper berry. Ooh. 
on the end here. So I ended with the dark red bead so that when I tie it together, that will line up, oops, that will line up to make our pattern complete. So what I need to do is remove this stopper bead. So just gonna open up this loop here. I couldn't get it with my fingers, so I did it with the needle. I'm gonna slide off this little yellow bead and carefully take the needle off of the other side. All right, and I just wanna get these beads a little more centered so that um, it'll be easier to tie it. There we go. Now I have pretty even lengths of thread here. So I'm going to tie these to secure them, just an overhand knot first. And I want it to suck into that juniper berry, that knot too. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and do, I guess, like a surgeon's knot. I don't know what they call it, but this little bit of thread is gonna go twice through the loop here. Maybe, oh my goodness. Okay, and tie that down tight. Okay, now, so this is a big eye needle, and this one has, doesn't have a hole at the end, it has two wires that come together and pull apart. Let me show you why that is going to be helpful here. With these shorter threads, it doesn't matter where I put it into this needle for me to push it through the other direction. If I had used the other needle, the needle would be longer than the thread and be too long to get it through the hole. So when I threaded it, I put the thread at this end and as I pulled it through the beads, the thread slid to this end of the needle and that helps me to pull it through. Okay, I'm going to just remove that. I'll show you again on this one. So I'm going to put the thread through the needle and the thread is now on this side. Okay, and now the end that has the thread in it, I'm going to send that through these beads. Okay, so that's going through those beads. And if you watch the thread, it's traveling to the other end so that I have enough room to pull it through those beads. Now it didn't go through as many as I wanted, so I'm gonna try again here. Hold please, I'm a little stuck. There we go. So I want it to go through these colored beads also, not just that juniper bead. Okay. There we go. And you can see the thread hasn't gone through, but the needle has. And now the needle will pull that thread through on the other end of the needle. I hope that makes sense. Okay, now before I cut these thread ends, I'm gonna use a little bit of hypo cement on the knot. Okay. So let's just show a little glue in here. And then we'll let that sit for a little bit. And now that this is all glued, I'm gonna cut off those extra threads. Trying to keep it close to the bead. Oh my goodness, there we go. Now I have thread glued to my finger, that's good. All right, and there we have it. One handsome beaded necklace.